Hey everybody, good morning. It's Pete. Welcome to today's episode of Stocks for Breakfast. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to start out uh, doing things a little bit differently. Um, <laughs> sometimes the videos can uh, get a little bit long, so the consumption rate, everybody has to make that decision. Do I, <laughs> do I want to invest in a 25-minute video before the market opens? Um, and it seems to be like the best time to run the videos is somewhere between eight and 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna try and do is instead of having uh, one long 20 to 30 minute video, I'm gonna break them up into a little bit of uh, more bite-sized chunks, hopefully so that we'll get enough information and enough lessons and enough uh, questions from the community that during the bro the separated videos, um, you can pick and choose what you want to instead of trying to, uh, trying to find where they are. The problem is I, I remember when I used to work uh, for T3 back in the day, I'd go into the studio and um, I'd tell the guy Parker that uh, I just have two things I want to talk about. I'll, I'll be done in five minutes and they'd always turn it to half an hour. And that's the beauty of trading. You just, once you get talking about it, you can't shut up. <laughs> you just love it. <laughs> so, uh, so in Stocks for Breakfast, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about trading lessons. We're going to get an overall view of going into the market that day. And then we're going to separate it out into a best stock picks video so that you can ask separate questions as well. Uh, we did have one good question yesterday. Oh, by the way, if you like the videos, please do me a favor and click down and subscribe. That would be awesome. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I love the comments. I always get back to them as soon as I can, whether it's a question about something we discussed in a previous video or uh, a chart setup that you just want uh, a different perspective on, or maybe just my perspective from the way I look at things, which is using the New York method and the order flow. Um, so there was a question brought up I had mentioned yesterday, uh, which was actually um, inspired by my cousin, Eddie, uh, who lives up in, uh, in Boston, uh, about trading crude oil. Because obviously crude oil has been all over the place. It's, it got absolutely crushed. The supply is, uh, supply is up and staying there because nobody's using it, right? Um, but the question is, everybody's asking me, how do I take advantage of this collapse in a commodity um, where a year from now, you're going to say, wow, I didn't let that opportunity pass me by. Because if you were in the market, let's say in 2007, 2008, during the financial collapse, it was scary. I mean, it, it was, it, it's easy to look back now, thir oh my gosh, 12, 13 years later already, um, and uh, say, oh, I should have done that. You know, it would have been so easy to buy American Express at $10, but it was a different, um, chaotic mindset. It was scary. I mean, the banking system was need to be bailed out by the government. It was scary. Uh, you know, you can watch the movie, The Big Short and get a really good in-depth uh, kind of behind the scenes of how it all played out and whatnot. But from a trading perspective, there was actually two different perspectives I could give you from trading from, from uh, uh, the economy, the world, and all of these big institutions perspective. It was scary. I mean, you were looking at stocks and you had no idea if they were going out of business or not, which you don't even know if they would have if they didn't get bailed out. Who knows what it would have happened? Uh, whether or not they should have done it again now during what's going on in this crisis and these loans and everything. I don't know, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I mean, it would be nice if somebody just handed me tens of millions of dollars to keep my toys open. I don't know, that's a whole, <laughs> that's a different video. Um, but the second perspective of that was from a day trading perspective and a short term perspective. It was, phenomenal trading. I mean, there was just swings that you just couldn't believe how fast stocks were moving. It reminded me trading back uh, in 2000 when the internet boom was kind of just working its way out um, of the picture, but the volatility was still amazing. Um, but what I want to point out is crude oil is a commodity futures contract. So what I mentioned yesterday in the video was that the current initial margin which is the amount of money you have to put up to buy one contract at the time that I looked yesterday, uh, was $5,500. So that's the amount that you need to put up for one contract just to buy the contract to hold going out. So I, I believe I looked at the March 2021 contract. Don't hold me to that, but those are the general numbers. Um, so that's the way futures work. So it's not the same as buying a stock where you have your equity and then you have margin, you know, two to one margin or four to one margin uh, to trade the stock. So if you've traded E-mini futures, it works the same way, uh, but that's a commodity future. So if 
again, I'm not, a, I'm not your financial advisor. It was just a question related to how to futures trade. You put up the margin to buy the contract. The contract expires at a certain time in the future so that it has to um, move during that time. So you could be right on the fact that it might move up in this case, uh, but it still needs to move up within that time where the contract expires. Uh, by the way, you also want to sell it <laughs> before the contract expires because you'll end up getting the, a crude oil delivered to your driveway <laughs> in that case. Um, so anyway, as the crude oil fluctuates up and down, obviously if it's moving in your favor, you don't have to add any additional margin. Uh, but if it starts moving against you, you might have to protect that as you would in any situation stop uh, with um, as a stop uh, for um, losses if it should happen to move against you. So that's a very general uh, overview of um, the crude oil question and the comment that I had made uh, that was inspired by my cousin Eddie. So <laughs> thanks, Eddie. And my, by the way, my cousin Eddie is a um, uh, uh, agent for jazz musician. So that's when you know <laughs> it, when when people in completely different industries um, start to ask questions about taking advantage of crude oil. It's smart because that wasn't that long ago when that when that frightening thing happened to the world. But now a lot of people are waking up. Uh, and, and saying, how could I take advantage of this for a year from now? Not as a trade, as a year from now, where I think hopefully, gosh, I hope the world will be back to normal. And a year from now, you're like, wow, crude oil just got crushed. It was all the way down at this level. And I, I made a smart investment. I put risk capital into the market and whatever the dollar amount is, let's say $5,000 in that example or 5,500, whatever it was. And that pure risk capital, you say a year from now, if I lose it, I'll manage, you know, I'll manage it however I, I plan to manage it. A year from now, uh, hopefully the world gets back to normal. And instead of it being $20 per contract, maybe it's up to 40 and you could double your money uh, in that time frame. That is a uh, valid strategy for trading commodities because commodities, there's only so much oil. There's only so much corn. There's only so much coffee, soybean, sugar, uh, that kind of thing. So if there's not a lot of it and you're down in those lower historical levels, uh, that is one of the things that where you, you know companies can go bankrupt, uh, but commodities once they have it or they don't, that is literally pure supply demand. So that was where the whole contracts came up in the first place. They were created to hedge for the people actually producing the commodity, uh, and it turned into a speculative investment. Which you know, thank God, you know, it was good for us. We got something else to trade, right? All right. So anyway, again, stocks for breakfast. We want to get into. Um, Really good question from somebody who's new to the coaching program uh, asked, what happens when you have a conflict in the main time frames that you're watching? So in other words, and we'll get to the charts, I'll show you, I'll show you visually because that helps a lot. Um, but let's say you're looking at higher time frames and you're doing what we what we discussed, top-down analysis where you're looking at what happened the last three months, you're looking at happened the last couple of weeks, then you're looking at happened the last couple of days, and then you're drilling it all the way down into, you might be day trading, you know, even if you're not day trading, but let's use day trading all the way down to the final example, right? So let's say the daily chart, the monthly charts are doing one thing and the weekly charts are doing the same thing. So they're on the same page where you know, you're in sync, right? Uh, but the um, daily charts are not doing the same thing. So what do you do? You don't have a perfect scenario. So the biggest thing to consider are two things. Number one is you need to know what your perfect trade is. And I'm going to keep drilling that home because it matters. You need to know what your perfect trade is because that's where your conviction level is going to be the highest. Does that mean you're always going to make money? Hell no. <laughs> it's all about probabilities. But if you have your A plus trade, that means all of the criteria in your scenario uh, that tell you it's a perfect trade, in whatever your strategy is, we all, you know, you, you start to get a feel for what my strategy is, which is order flow, right? Um, anything that's not your perfect trade should lower your conviction level, lower your risk profile, if you even decide to take the trade at all. You can definitely take a trade that's not a perfect trade. You just have to know that it doesn't meet all of your criteria. Uh, and even then, you could debate whether or not you should take those trades at all. You could be super disciplined like an algorithm and say, nope. <laughs> I'm only taking those trades that are perfect and, and get in and out and do, you know, do whatever you want to do. And again, in and out can mean one trade a week. It could mean one trade an hour, which is actually going to be the second part of the equation here. Um, so you have your perfect trade. So all the way from top down, everything lines up. So let's just say everything lines up perfectly, right? Um, 
then you drop down to whatever time frame that you're fine tuning your entries, whether it's a position trade and you're going to hold it for a couple of months, whether it's a swing trade where you're going to hold for a week or three days or you know whatever it happens to be, maybe 10 days, uh, or a day trade, which is really where the question came from. So the question was, what if the weekly chart and the monthly chart are going down, but the last three or four days, the stock's going up? And the stock is also negative today. So, so we have a real mix all over the place, right? So the uh, weekly and the monthly are going down. The last three days are going up. So clearly right now the stock is going up and over the last three days, there's what we might call momentum, right? But today, so, to, so you go into the day saying, I want to be long because I'm a short-term trader and let's use in this example, a day trader. Again, just for argument's sake. So what do you do? How do you manage not um, but bottom picking a stock that's going down right now, but going up for the last three days, <laughs> but going down for the last three weeks. Well, there's different ways to an analyze this. First of all, me personally, uh, because I only day trade stocks that I would swing trade in those some, same directions because I like to have the bigger picture on my side. Um, I would probably be looking for a spot to get short if that stock was down in the higher time frames, and that bounce is probably a uh, um, a pause in the longer term move to the downside. So in that case, I'd be looking for the stock to become well offered, stop going up on the daily charts, see lower lows, lower highs, close below the open, and hopefully close below the close, and I'd start to initiate new short sales. But that's that's the bigger picture of. Uh, where I got, where I got all this gray hair from, <laughs> I'll take all that stress out now. But from the day trading perspective, if it's going up for the last three days, you have a valid argument on that shorter time frame to be looking to get long. Okay, but during the day, I've seen it and I've done it where it's going down. And you're like, well, where do I where do I buy it? It's going down right now. I don't want to I don't want to bottom fish. I want to wait for it to um, give me some more confirmation in the direction of the last three days. So you have two choices. You have two choices. And the first one's going to be difficult to wait for because if it's going down, you're probably well below the open price. So at that point, that one uh, 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 significant reference point of reading the tape is pushing lower and you don't have an opportunity yet because you're trading against today's order flow, which is going to be the second part of today's uh, trading lesson. So what you can do and um, what I think is brilliant, uh, I've seen other traders do it. I adopted it years ago. I've seen day traders do it. And I, you can actually use this as a strategy by itself <laughs> where you use the hourly candlestick to give you confirmation that right now it's going up. So in other words, you could be going down from 930 to 10 o'clock, even though you're going up the last three days. And then all of a sudden at 1030, when the first hour finishes, and again, that's another thing on the chart. You could determine if you want the first hour or the last hour to be 30 minutes, completely up to you. But let's, let's just use 9.30 to 10.30 as an example. And what happens is now at 10.30, it stops going down, and that new hourly chart, the new hourly candlestick starts to print. So now the first hour, uh, first hour is done, second hour starts to print, and that second hour now starts to be green. So what you essentially have is this hour is now in sync with the last three days. That's when you would start looking for new entry signals, despite the fact that the hourly, can, uh, the monthly and the weekly candlesticks are pointing down, you built an argument that the last three days there's momentum. You wanna look for short-term opportunities, day trading specifically in this example, to the upside. So you, you stay out of the way while it's going down, which yesterday there's some good examples of strong stocks that traded down the entire day and you wouldn't even look for an entry signal which by the way, that's a big tip. I know it's the right word for trading, but that's a big tip uh, in, in the trading world is that you need signals, you need criteria. That's probably a better way to word it. You need criteria before you look for a signal. That's the right way to word it. You need criteria to say that if this is happening <clears throat> and only then do you look for entry signals. If it's not happening, you don't even look for entry signals, which is how you avoid uh, a lot of the crappy trades that cost us our trading account. So again, I'll, I'll show you on the charts in, in one second. Um, but again, the last thing I want to I want to point out is when that hourly chart starts to trade back in the direction, you have you have a choice now. 
okay, are you above or below the opening price? Because we, we now know from being a tape reader, the opening price is our minimum criteria for drawing that line in the sand to say that today's order flow matches our longer term picture. So in this case, our longer term is the last three days. So if the last three days and today's open price are all doing the same thing, you could be a little bit more convinced. You can have a little bit more conviction that you could look for entries in that direction. If you're below the opening price, though, you're leaning on the hourly candlestick to tell you that right now prices have bottomed, and as long as that candlestick stays green, you can then start to look for entries in that direction if and when you get above the opening price and the hourly candlesticks are also well uh, green and they become well bid, um, then you start to really have a better argument than you did while it was going down. And now you're trading that stock uh, again in that direction. So kind of cool that um, it's that specific. And I can't stress enough, your trading, that's right, I'm talking to you, your trading will be infinitely less stressful when you have definite criteria. The problem you're going to have is you're going to be sitting there some days and you're going to say, there's nothing to do. <laughs> That's good. I'm not saying it's good that there's nothing to do. I'm saying you'll be, the fact that you'll be able to say that because you're looking for something specific. That's when you know you're turning the corner and you're really starting to become something special you're becoming something special because now you're elevating yourself past all of the people myself included way back in the day who were just trading and looking for entry signals as opposed to trading to become a trader which means you're only allocating money you're only putting your money in harm's way when there's a likelihood of it moving in the direction that you expect it to and that's the difference between trading and chart reading. Chart reading, you're looking for patterns, you're looking for indicators, and all of this other stuff that goes into um, all this, all the stuff that comes with the charting package. But I'm going to tell you this right now: you did not open a trading account to be, become the world's greatest chart reader. You didn't. You opened a trading account to make money, and that's the difference between what I do and what most people who struggle and fail that are just master chart readers. I'm trying to make money and I'm trying to set up the odds. I'm trying to manage risk. I'm trying to manage probability. I'm trying to manage myself all at the same time in order to pull money out of the market on a regular basis. I don't need to be the world's greatest chart reader on the planet. I want to be the greatest trader on the planet. There's a big difference. There's certainly people that know are certified market technicians and know all of this other stuff and everything you could possibly believe. But you know what? Put some money on the line and see what you can do. Because once all those emotions kick in and you aren't prepared for them, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see the difference between being a great chart reader and being a great trader. And hopefully I can inspire you to make that jump from chart reader to trader because that's where the money is. The money is not in being the world's greatest technician. The world is your oyster if you get in there and actually learn how to set up great trades. So I'm, I'm going to uh, leave it at that so that we can go into another video and I'll, I'll leave you with the inspiration of you can pause the video, go back and write down all the criteria that I just said, because you know, kind of it's a YouTube video. <laughs> you can dig in there and do a little hard work. Uh, but we do have some earnings today. I just want to make sure that we talk about those, uh, some big earnings actually today. We have MasterCard, Boeing. Boeing's been a good stock to day trade lately. I'm going to get that out there as well. General Electric and ADP, those are scheduled to come out prior to the market on today's April 29th. Uh, and after hours today scheduled is Microsoft, Tesla, Facebook, Qualcomm, and a forgotten stock, eBay. <laughs> Another one that's interesting, right? So Microsoft, Tesla, and Facebook, um, very important. Actually, I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Um, talk about which stocks to pick and how to trade them in the next video. We'll get into that. So um, have an awesome day. Hope you're being safe. Super, super excited that it looks like the world's getting back to normal. Who knows? Uh, but I'm not safe. I'm, I'm not, I'm not feeling safe going out yet. I'm still quarantined. We're buying enough food for a week, staying home. Um, but I will say this, and I want to end the video on this. If you were day trading yesterday, there was some pretty nasty selling during the day. Some pretty nasty selling. It was a breakout in a lot of stock that pulled back and the selling, the most of the stocks did not recover. 
here's the question that I have for you to ponder, and let's we'll review this as as we're moving forward, right? Um, all of that exciting news that's actually continuing into the market today, and the futures are actually trading higher today from yesterday's close. Was yesterday sell the news where we had this really uh, bullish rally for going on five weeks right now? Um, and then the positive news came out where the whole rally, we basically had bad news, right? Oh my gosh, the, the crescendo of, of the pandemic is going to occur in the middle of April and all of the bad news that went with that. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, yesterday we started to see good news about states reopening and limited, but states reopening and, and the concept of getting back to normal. And we saw nasty selling yesterday. Are we seeing sell the news? We'll see. Speak to you soon.